In this video, we will talk about the Hirschsprung's disease. The Hirschsprung's disease is a congenital anomaly that results in mechanical obstruction from inadequate motility of the part of intestine due to absence of neural ganglia or ganglionic cells from the segments of colon. This is why it is also sometimes called the intestinal aganglionosis or just the congenital megacolon or congenital aganglionic megacolon. Normally, the intestine smooth waste through bowels in one direction via coordinated wave-like smooth muscle contractions called peristalsis. The peristalsis is controlled by the autonomic nervous system which is divided into two parts, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is our fight or flight response which increases the heart rate while slowing digestion through reducing peristalsis. The parasympathetic nervous system is rest and digest response and it slows heart rate and increases digestion by promoting peristalsis. When we look closer at intestinal smooth muscle layer, it is composed of circular and longitudinal muscle layers. Within these layers are two plexuses or networks of nerves made up of ganglia, which are clusters of independent parasympathetic ganglionic cells. First, there is the myentric plexus or our back's plexus, which causes smooth muscle relaxation. The myentric plexus is connected to the submucosal plexus, also known as Meissner's plexus, which helps in controlling the blood flow. But in Hirschsprung's disease, there is absence of parasympathetic ganglionic cells in the nerve plexus, resulting in only sympathetic stimulation. The intestines are unable to relax and remain in a state of constant contraction. Ultimately, the result is the state of lack of peristalsis, which blocks the movement of feces. In majority of cases, the short distal segment of the colon is affected. However, in 5% of cases, the entire colon is affected. Now we will talk about the causes of Hirschsprung's disease. It is caused by mutations in two genes, the RET gene and the EDNRB gene, which results in absence of ganglionic cells in certain parts of the colon. This disease is most common cause of intestinal obstruction in infants. The instance is 1 in 5,000 live births. It is 4 times more common in males than in females and follows a familial pattern in small number of cases. The clinical features differ in infants and older children. In neonates and infants, the initial symptom is failure to pass meconium, which is the first stool mainly passed within the first two days of life. Abdominal distension occurs within one to two days after birth due to stasis of feces. Bile stained vomiting occurs due to intestinal obstruction. Weight loss and dehydration may also occur. Shock may develop if the condition is not treated promptly. Enterocolites can occur due to fecal stagnation. In older children, the Hirschsprung's disease is manifested by constipation with abdominal distension due to mass of feces and gas. When stools are passed, they may be foul-smelling and may be passed in pellet or ribbon-like form. Malnutrition and anemia can also develop due to malabsorption of nutrients. Protruded abdomen and thin wasted extremities can also be seen. Now we will talk about the diagnosis of Hirschsprung's disease. Typically, 99% of normal-term infants pass the meconium in first 48 hours, but less than 10% of infants with Hirschsprung's disease do so. On rectal examination, there may be an explosive leakage of gases and accumulated feces, known as the squirt or blast sign. Abdominal x-ray may show enlarged colon full of stool. The diagnosis is confirmed by suction biopsy, which shows absence of ganglionic cells. Now we will talk about the treatment of Hirschsprung's disease, which involves non-surgical as well as surgical management. In the non-surgical management, it involves relieving chronic constipation with stool softeners as well as rectal irrigation with normal saline. Hydration is maintained by IV fluids and electrolytes. IV antibiotics are sometimes given to limit the risk of infection. The surgical management is the mainstay of treatment. The surgery is performed as a two-stage procedure. In the first stage, a temporary colostomy is done above the transition zone of ganglionic and aganglionic bowel. This enables the distended bowel to return to its original tone and size. The second stage of surgery involves definitive or reconstructive surgery. It involves complete surgical correction in which normal bowel is attached to the anal opening by pull-through procedure at the age of 12 to 15 months or when the weight of the baby is 7 to 9 kg. There are three types of surgeries used. The first is the Duhamel's procedure, which is also sometimes called a retrorectal transanal pull-through. In this, a ganglionic colon proximal to the rectum is rejected and side-by-side -side attachment of normal ganglionic colon to the posterior wall of the rectum is performed. The second is the Swinson's procedure, also known as rectosigmoidectomy. In this, a ganglionic segment of the bowel is cut and removed, and remaining bowel normally attached to the anal sphincter. 
The third is the Swave's operation, also called endorectal pull-through. In this, the mucosa of the rectum is removed and ganglionic colon pulled through the muscle sleeve of the rectum and anastomosed with the anus. The optimal age for reconstructive surgery is 6 to 8 months after temporary colostomy. Let's talk about the nursing management of Hirschsprung's disease. The first nursing diagnosis will be constipation related to reduced bowel motility as evidenced by infrequent bowel movements. The nursing interventions will include administering stool softeners, fluids for proper hydration, higher fiber diet intake, administering laxatives as prescribed or giving enemas. The second nursing diagnosis will be imbalance in nutrition less than body requirements related to anorexia as evidenced by weight loss. The nursing interventions will include providing high calorie and high protein diet. In severe cases, total parental nutrition can be given. In case of surgery, pre- and post-operative management is provided to the patient. The pre-operative management involves assessment of the newborn, both physical assessment as well as history taking, explaining to the parents about the disease process, its causes and the need for surgery, assessing vital signs to establish baseline data about the child, monitoring abdominal girth to detect abdominal distension, repeated saline enemas and bowel wash with antibiotic solution like neomycin is done in older children to prepare the bowel for surgery. Withholding feeds and nasogastric aspiration is done on night before surgery. The post-operative management involves monitoring vital signs of the child, observing abdominal dressing or ostomy bag for bleeding, placing the child in comfortable position. In the post-operative period, avoid taking rectal temperature, observe for redness, swelling and drainage at the surgical site. Start oral feeds with glucose water and milk as soon as bowel sounds return. Thank you for watching. That was all about the Hirschsprung's disease. <music>